welcome everyone. We'll give it a moment for folks to connect and then we will get started. It's always fun to see that attendee list growing and growing as people join. So welcome if you've just joined. And again, we'll get started in probably about one minute. All right, I see the the entrance is starting to slow down, so let's get started. Welcome everyone to today's webinar, The Journey Toward Optimal Course Design, Making Every Step Easier. I'm Jennifer Malkovich, and I head up operations and marketing for City Labs. And I'm joined today by Kenneth Larson, who's our co-founder and also the inventor of some of the fun tools that you're going to see today. So first, a few practical reminders. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and after the webinar, anyone who has registered for the webinar will receive an email with a link to the recording. Um, also, we've enabled the Q&A panel, so please do use that throughout to submit your questions. You're also welcome to use the chat um, to say hello and um, add any other commentary. We'd love to hear from you, but it's really helpful if you submit questions in the Q&A panel as our team will keep track of those throughout and we'll also save time at the end to answer questions. Um, and so also we invite you to stick around for a chance to win an iPad. Um, we first announced this webinar at InstructureCon a couple of weeks ago, and one of the things we tried to do was um, incent people to register and join us. And so at the end, um, we will announce one lucky winner of an iPad chosen at random. So with that, let's get started. I'm going to give you a quick background on City Labs and then and introduce our topic for today, and then I'll hand things over to Kenneth. So for those of you who aren't familiar, City Labs is a company that provides tools for Canvas that can enhance the process of designing and delivering online courses. And we're going to look at these tools today in much more detail and show you how they can really make every step of the course design journey much easier. We loved the metaphor that was used at InstructureCon North America two weeks ago and really chose to carry that into this webinar because we think about course design as just that, a journey, not a destination. So whether you're building new courses or reviewing and quality checking your courses or refining them for a new term, it's really all about continuous improvement. And I think this is particularly true after such a huge volume of content got into Canvas with the emergency phase of the pandemic, as we're all too familiar with. Um, and we know that many of you are working to improve upon that content um, that, that got online and perhaps quite a rush um, in 2020 and, and do that based on the lessons that were learned. So hopefully the path uh, for your journey is well marked and very gradual in, with a very gradual incline and full of sunbeams like the one pictured here. Uh, but we do know that sometimes the path is not quite as smooth as we had hoped, and that there can be a lot of obstacles in the way, whether it's shortage of resources, time, skills, or even just the sheer volume of courses that many of you need to deliver and continuously enhance. And so with these challenges in mind, I'm going to hand things over to Kenneth who is going to really spend some time 
showing you how our tools can help address these challenges and 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 sort of smooth your path and and your journey along the course design journey. So Kenneth, okay. over to you. Sounds great. Okay, we are going to cover a lot today in a very short period of time. Uh, if any of the things you see are of interest to you and you want to learn more, uh, let us know. We'll have some information at the end of, about how you can reach out to us as well. Uh, but my personal journey uh, of working with Canvas courses started back in 2013. I was a grad student uh, working for Utah State University's uh, Center for Innovative Design and Instruction as I worked on a master's degree to become an instructional designer. And it was my job to help uh, build and manage and maintain and you know help prep courses for delivery uh, for all of our online courses at Utah State. And um, there were some things that I found in Canvas that were a bit tedious. Uh, there were things I really wanted to do with courses, and uh, so I was lucky enough to have a boss crazy enough. He let me start hacking course, uh, hacking Canvas, and so some of the things you'll see are some things that I built. Uh, others uh, were, came out of our uh, team, at, the team that I was part of there at Utah State, and then uh, others came uh, out of partnerships with other institutions, as uh, Jennifer mentioned early on. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these steps in the journey that you might encounter. Now, each of us is starting somewhere, whether uh, it's building brand new courses or working with enhancing courses. And since with the last few years being what they were, a lot of us are working on the enhancing. So we're going to start there and then we'll talk about building here in just a moment. So uh, let's say that you have some courses out there that you've built inside of Canvas that you've got all the nice structure and the flow and the content and the links and the images, but Canvas just in and of itself can be a little text heavy, can be a little bland. Uh, and so we can have some more fun with this by using uh, our product called Design Plus. Now Design Plus is a suite of tools to help you rapidly build uh, nice looking courses in Canvas. And it can also be used even with your existing courses uh, to give them a quick facelift. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this page. And then up here in the top right, uh, I'm gonna open up this design tools sidebar. So this is this extra set of tools that we can use uh, along the, the way to start transforming some content. So I'm gonna start by choosing a theme. The tools come pre-configured with a variety of themes that you know kind of dictate the look and feel of that content. So I can go ahead and choose a theme and it's gonna add a nice stylized heading in there. It's already put that page title in for me. There are, uh, you can work with the content here in Canvas as editor, but there are some other pieces over here. So maybe for example, I want to say that this is part of week number one. I can quickly customize that there. Uh, and so we have this nice stylized heading. And for some of our faculty at Utah State, this is where they started. But we want to have even more fun with this. So we're going to transform the rest of that. Now, one thing that you'll notice here, as we have this, wrap, this heading, there's this design tools wrapper around it. This is where all of that theming takes place so that we're not interfering with anything else going on in other areas of Canvas. And so if you want your content to get that nice look and feel, you're going to want to build it inside that wrapper. But since we're working with existing content, we need to get it up in there. So I'm going to start adding what we call content blocks. So these tools are really kind of based on this idea of grouping and chunking your content into these different blocks. And there's a lot of different things you can customize at the institution level. One of those is the ability to actually create institutional blocks. Uh, so you can make these templates, these chunks that you really like people to be able to pick and choose from and use as they're building out their courses. You can make those available so people can pull those in. And so I could start pulling these in and cutting and pasting, but I don't really like cutting and pasting that much. So what I'm going to do instead is here in the editor, I'm going to use my cursor to highlight highlight what I want to become a content block. And I'm going to click this selection to block. So now that's moved that up into that wrapper. And then I'm just going to shift click my way down through the content using the, the built in heading structure that's already part of this uh, nicely created content here and turn each of these pieces into their own content block. Now it is leaving some little empty remnants behind. Once I have all of my content blocks created, I can come in here and hit that remove empty and that will clean those up. So now here in my content, I've got this nice alternating light gray and white and starting to get that style coming through. Um, there are some additional outlines that can help you see the underlying structure. If I don't want those, I can change the view over here over into the browser view. Uh, that'll give me more of an idea of what it will look like when saved. I can also get an idea of what this might look like on, say, Canvas's mobile app. Uh, so we can change over and get more of an idea of how that would flow on uh, a typical smartphone. Or I can also see it without any of the external styling. So this is just the very bland, 
underlying content because Canvas will also let you make content available offline so students can download it if they don't have a great internet connection at home. But in that setting, Canvas doesn't add any of that additional styling. So we've got kind of the basic structure here. Uh, let's have a little bit more fun. So up here uh, in this section, we have kind of the, the tools are grouped based on activity type. So here we've created some of that initial content. We've chosen our theme, et cetera. Um, we can also come in here and each of those blocks we created has some controls. So I can drag and drop and rearrange. I can also come in and have some fun adding an icon. So between the icons that are built into Canvas and an icon font called Font Awesome, there's over 2,000 icons here that have been keyword indexed and categorized to help you find what you're looking for. And so we can have some fun coming in here and you know customizing uh, some icons for each of our different blocks. Um, I can also you know work with you know some of those front page pieces with, uh, that we can look at. We can also come in and there's this customize the style section. So I could go ahead and select an image and I could, you know, make sure that it has appropriate alternative text or I can adjust the size of that or maybe I want it floated to the left of the text with a nice round border style or maybe we can take this and float it to the right with a square border style. So we can very quickly go through existing content and using the different tools go from something that was previously kind of bland and vanilla to something with that much more polished look and feel. Um, and so that's working with existing content. If instead you're working on building courses from scratch, there's a lot of other fun things we can do along the way with this as well. So here I have a blank Canvas course. I'm gonna start by coming to the settings and I'm gonna turn on another tool that is part of Design Plus, which is our multi-tool. This is kind of a course building course scaffolding tool. And so I've got that enabled. It's not something your students would see, just your content creators, but I can open this up and there's four tools that I can use just right in here to help me get going. I'm going to start at the top with the template builder. And one of the first things you'll see here is the ability to create a front page. I really like the option that Canvas gives you to have your courses start with this nice content page. I can make it look nice. I can add easy resources to it. But I hate that it takes about seven steps to set that up. Uh, and so this has just created a page called home, published it, marked it as a front page. Uh, I can also go ahead and set the home link to that. And if I wanted, I could even come in here, open up that front page, open up the sidebar. Um, I can choose from our front page themes. So with these, in addition to a stylized heading, we'll start with an image and a little navigation section. There's also this message underneath that lets you know the recommended or required image ratio that works best with those. I'll show you more about that here in just a moment. So I can select that front page theme. Uh, I can come in and like I said, you can edit the content in Canvas's editor because we're using Canvas's native editor. We're just kind of adding to it. Um, but I've also added a few things here to kind of make life a little easier for you. So I could say this is going to be called, let's call this City Labs and uh, we'll call this Welcome to Design Plus. And we can add a subtitle and I can add a description or I can remove those different pieces. So it just gives you a quick and easy way to customize those. With the banner image, you can set the default at the institution level and you can provide additional images that people can choose from. But personally, I like this image to reflect the subject being taught and where possible, also the personality of the instructor. So at any point, I can select an image uh, or I can put my cursor where I want to add a new image and I can open up the third tool that's part of Design Plus. This is our upload embed image tool. This will let me pull an image from my computer, an image I already have in my course of user files in Canvas. We also have integrations with unsplash.com and pexels.com. So let's say that I'm working on some sort of uh, science course here. We can go ahead and if I can type correctly, we can search some Creative Commons zero licensed image libraries uh, where we can come in here and we could, you know, pick one of these images. And it's automatically going to do some resizing. 2000 plus pixel images are don't ever display that large. They just make your pages load slower. So we're automatically uh, resizing that, but you can do some additional resizing. But where I want this is the banner. This is where I can use that recommended or required image ratio to go ahead and crop this image and find a portion of it that I want to use. I can go ahead and crop that. I can uh, change the name. I can add alternative text. I can choose where I want that to go in my course or user files. And then I can send the request for that to be added inside of Canvas. Uh, and we can go ahead and send that. We can add and rearrange our navigation items and we can continue to enhance that front page to create a nice landing area there for our students. Now, returning back to the multi-tool, the main thing that you want to think about here in the template builder is you want to think about the different pieces that are going to make up your course. So let's say that uh, in each of my modules, I want to have an overview page. 
And maybe this is a course where I have some lab assignments, or maybe I'm going to have some reading discussions. It's just giving you the ability to create shells for these default types of content uh, that you can create in Canvas. It's creating a shell for that in the current course. And then I can open that up in a new tab to start building out the template. So I could open up the sidebar here, uh, and I can come in here, and I could either pull from a template that I've already created in this course, or an institutionally defined template, or uh, I can do like we did before, and I can start by choosing a theme here, and I can add those uh, pre-built content blocks, uh, or I can come in and create my own. Maybe I want a, you know, a current events section in here, so I can create my own blocks as well. Uh, and you can rearrange those, add additional items, because as I mentioned, we're using native Canvas. You can use any of the functionality you're already familiar with can in Canvas, any of your external LTI integrations, whatever you really need to build out these templates. And the idea is to build as much of the structure as you can so that you're repeating yourself as little as possible when it comes time to actually putting the content in the course. And so you can go ahead and set that, and then you'd go ahead and save it. Um, now, there is a question I just noticed. I'm kind of keeping an eye on chat and QA, but not quite. But there's a question about where you can store templates that you can use in other courses. Um, because we're using native Canvas, you can deliver your courses and resources in any of the ways that are built into Canvas. So you can build Blueprint courses that feed into these. You can build template modules and pages and stuff that you can share through Canvas Commons. Uh, you can use you know, your export as you copy your course from one term to the next. All of that content flows just like any other content you built in Canvas um, because we're just uh, helping you build that in native Canvas and then adding that style on top of it. Uh, so, so great questions. Keep them coming, uh, and we'll keep going through this. All right, so I've got my template set. I've saved it. I'm not going to publish it. Students don't need to see this. We're just going to use it to help us build out the course. So then I could return the multi-tool, and I could complete that same process with any of the templates I want to create. And with your assignments, discussions, and pages, in addition to what you put in the editor, you can use any of the built-in settings in Canvas, like if I want to add a grading rubric, or I want students to post to the discussion before they see other students' responses. All of those options are open to you as you're building out those different uh, templates here in the module builder. When it comes to Canvas's classic quizzes, they're a little more limited. Um, we can duplicate the basic instructions and the settings like one question at a time, but Canvas never built support for uh, duplicating things like your questions or your question banks. Uh, and then with Canvas's new quizzes, Canvas actually built those completely independent of the rest of Canvas, and they haven't yet provided uh, the endpoints and stuff for uh, uh, third parties like ourselves to get in and help with building those. So you could build new quizzes inside of Canvas as a template using native Canvas, and we can help you use those here in the next step. But Canvas haven't, hasn't given us the ability yet to help out with those new quizzes. When they do give it, we'll get in there and play as well. So you really go through and you flush out all of the different templates. Once you've got those set, the next step would be to move on to the module builder. So here we're taking a step back and we're thinking about what a typical module is going to look like in this course. So let's say I'm going to break up my course by units and I'm going to have five units. And in each of my units, I want to have an overview page that is based off of that uh, overview template we created. I can also throw in any number of assignments or discussions or classic quizzes or those little text headers. Now your assignments, this is also where you could pull in any uh, new quizzes you've built because those are an external assignment. We can drag and drop and rearrange. We can indent things. We can remove things. Let's say that this is going to be the lab for my unit based off my lab template. I want it submitted online at 100 points a piece. So we're really just kind of setting up this pattern. Once we've got the pattern set, we can generate the module list, which will duplicate that pattern for however many modules we told it we wanted to create. And now I'm starting to outline this course. So maybe this is going to be my introduction module, and I want this page to be called Welcome to Class, uh, if I can spell correctly today. And maybe I'm not going to have a quiz in this first module, but I have additional assignments or discussions or pages I want to throw in there. So we're really just starting to go down through here and customize these. So maybe this one's halfway there, and this one's almost finished, and this one is our conclusion, and this is going to be our final exam. You get the idea. We're really just going through and starting to now fine tune each of these modules. You can also save your progress so I can work on this outline as long as I need. And then when I'm ready uh, and I've got everything I set, 
uh, the way I want, I can add the modules to the course. So now this is using Canvas in the background to, to build that module structure for you and duplicate all those templates and create shells for all the other items. When I was working at Utah State, when we would uh, build uh, work with someone to build a new course, they'd sit down with one of our instructional designers, they'd have a half hour to an hour conversation, look at some example courses, take a bunch of notes, then they'd separate and the instructional designer or one of our student interns would spend anywhere from four hours to two days to take our basic shell that we'd created and then populate that and build out a course that the teacher could start to edit. Well, now they'll actually utilize these tools and by the end of a half hour to hour conversation, they can walk out with a fully built out course shell with all of the templates and different pieces in place so that they can immediately come in and start populating that. Now, when you uh, build your templates and you use the module builder to create your course, it will actually push in how you're breaking up your modules, what number you're on, how you've titled that content. And so now I'm just editing this and working my way through my different assignments, discussions, pages, quizzes, et cetera, to populate those templates with the actual content that's uh, going to be part of that course. At any point in time, I can also return to the multi-tool and this would allow me to add to existing modules or build more modules. We also have in here uh, our own due date modifier. So this brings in all of your assignments, discussions, pages, quizzes, et cetera, so that you can set the time they're gonna date and time that they'll be due, when they're gonna unlock, when they're gonna lock, the show and hide answers dates for Canvas's classic quizzes. And you can do this when you're building a brand new course or even the courses you've been teaching for years. Canvas gives you that ability to set the new start and end date when you copy it over and it'll move your assignments forward accordingly. Well, this gives you that ability to come in after that and make the little adjustments because holidays and breaks fall at different times every time you teach a course. Now, Canvas did introduce their own bulk date modifier about two years ago. Uh, they actually consulted with us when they were going to be building it because we'd had ours for quite a few years. And I gave them my uh, list of things that we'd learned and my top list of things that we hadn't been able to incorporate yet. And they are getting really close to having all of the items on my wish list. There's still a few things missing. So as long as ours still continues to add additional functionality, uh, you can do that. Like uh, with our tool, you can set default times for any of your different pieces. So when things are gonna unlock, lock, show and hide answers dates. You can do a bunch of bulk updating. You can set blackout dates. So you can go through your calendar and mark all your holidays and breaks so that when you're picking from the dates below, you can see those grayed out. So I could go ahead and select multiple assignments here and set when they're going to be due, when they're going to unlock, when they're going to lock, change dates and times, roll things forward and backward a number of days, lots of things with those core dates. And there's also a very similar tool in here that will let you work with the, the dates for like your scheduled announcements. If you like announcements to go out at specific times every time you teach a course, you can use that to quickly adjust those dates and times from the last time you taught. It also gives you a nice easy way you can delete announcements that maybe we're just a one-off from the last time you taught. And so that's the multi-tool. So now we've got this nice course here uh, with all of this content. And there are a lot of different things uh, that you can do with that design tool sidebar and using design plus. We've just kind of scratched the surface here. This page gives you an idea of just the wide variety of possibilities that are available to you. Now, um, when we do set up for an, an organization, we will adjust the colors so that they match your institutional branding so that the, the themes already you know fit in with your canvas. Uh, and then there's just the other themes. I'm gonna quickly cycle through these so you can see some of these different options. Um, at the institution level, you can control which of these are visible, but I'm really just changing the style of the page. So the content structure, all of that remains the same, but your courses don't have to look exactly the same from one course to the next for students to feel comfortable and confident as they navigate through them. Now that sidebar where we were building that content and working with it, it actually allows you to do a lot and we don't wanna overwhelm people. So we've broken it down into comfort levels. So every user starts at a basic level. Uh, at that basic level, you can choose themes, you can work with those front page pieces, you can add content blocks, you can style images like we did, you can turn links into buttons, you can add style and structure to your tables, including headings and captions and row hover and zebra stripes and, you know, making tables sortable alphanumerically. You can work with ordered and unordered lists, changing numbering styles and bullet styles and mixing and matching for more complex styles. As you embed external content in Canvas, so most of the way that Canvas, you, you know, video comes into Canvas, as well as a lot, of, a lot of other external content providers, 
those utilize iframes and iframes are notoriously painful to work with even for crazy people like i am and so we've got some tools in there to help you work with the size and the position and the responsive behavior of of your iframes uh, as i mentioned there are over 2,000 icons you pick, can pick and choose from Another piece that, that comes into play that we won't dig into too far today uh, that's in the basic level are there are some tools that are unique to the course syllabus section in Canvas. For example, you can build template syllabi and you can create content blocks that are unique to that syllabus section. Uh, you can also do things like uh, pulling in your grading scheme into the syllabus from your Canvas course, or we have institutional policy blocks that you can build for like all your legalese stuff. Uh, you can add those in uh, and they're locked in the syllabus. So people who edit the syllabus aren't changing those policies there in the syllabus. But anytime they edit the syllabus to say make the updates for the dates for the next term or things like that, uh, the tools will automatically scan through, find any of your institutional policies, go out to where they're defined at the institution level, grab the current state and replace what's in the syllabus with those updated policies. Uh, so it allows you to keep make sure that those stay up to date across your different courses. But then as an individual user, you can go in and turn tools. So at what we consider more the intermediate level, you can start to play with other styling things like adding in borders and working with margins and color and, and padding and playing with colors and with our different color pickers. In addition to working with the different colors, you'll also see the WCAG 2.1 accessibility rating to let you know if the colors you select have sufficient color contrast. Uh, we've got a variety of built in call outs and text emphasis and highlight colors and badge styles. And you can start to build dynamic panel widgets. So we have things like tabs and accordions, which are each one panel at a time. We also have a variation called expander where you can operate the panels independently or as an entire group. Uh, for those of you out there who do build templates that you share with others, one of the fun things we have is what we call key action items. This is a way to add notes or instructions into the editor that are only visible in the editor. So they show up for those who are editing content, but they don't show up for your students. We have a variety of built-in module progress indicators. These are a visual way to let students know where they are as they're working through the module, either from start to end, seeing where they are in the middle, seeing the type of information they'd see on the modules page in Canvas. This one's based on the completion requirements you can set so students can see the items they've completed, items that are still remaining, things that are running late. There are quick and easy ways to add links to your modules to a given page. Works great on the front page as a nice jumping off point. You can do things like indicating for students what the current module should be and pulling in this information for either the current module or for all the modules. Lots of different fun things you can do there. Uh, adding basic information about teachers and TAs. Then we hit the advanced level, and um, the majority of the tools in the advanced level are for individuals like myself of perhaps somewhat questionable sanity who actually enjoy working with things like HTML or CSS, um, but or those who have to troubleshoot those. Um, but there are some other fun things you can do in this advanced level. We have a box styles tool where you can create your own custom styles that you can apply to images or paragraphs or other elements, and you can save them so you can reuse them in the future. You can build pop-up content like tooltips and popovers and modal dialogues. We have these little ungraded multiple choice questions called quick checks. They're just a quick formative assessment so that you can drop a question into your content. Students can choose an answer, check it, and get immediate feedback of whether they understood that correctly. Or you could provide additional information to clear that up. And that might be an image, it might be a video, almost anything you can build in Canvas, you can build into those responses. And then if what you've seen so far is not enough fun, uh, we do also have what we call HTML snippets. These are really just a way to take pre-configured chunks of content and insert them at the cursor position. And we've built a bunch of things for you. Things like block quotes and additional heading levels and pre-formatted text and code blocks and uh, alerts and callouts in a variety of styles and some responsive column layout options that you can choose from. Uh, these resize with your, your computer. So on smaller screens, they stack on top of each other. On larger screens, they show up side by side. So all of the content and the things we're helping you build have been designed to resize nicely to fit your different uh, browser sizes. We have some fun little horizontal divider lines, adding in images with captions and a wide variety of, you know, well, a variety of styles and layout options that you can choose from. And then at the institution level, you also have the ability to define your own. So if you want to build chunks like this to share with your users, you can do that through the tools as well. And everything that we build 
we design to try and make it as responsive as possible. We also do uh, the research to, to make sure that we're adding appropriate ARIA controls for screen readers, uh, keyboard controls for keyboard users, uh, any of those different things we can to make sure that the content you're creating meets accessibility guidelines as well. Um, and so that is Design Plus. Uh, that is a great starting point uh, for your journey as you're either building brand new courses or you're working with existing courses. Other portions of this journey uh, include kind of that reviewing and, you know, as time goes on and your course has been taught for a few years, you start to get little things that have crept in uh, along the way. And so we have some other tools to help out along the way as well. So for example, um, I taught uh, an internet development course at Utah State University, and it had been taught by several people before me. And when I got it, there were tons of files. I didn't know if they were being used. I didn't dare delete them. Uh, and it was just, there were multiple copies of readings. You know, I'm sure you've seen these types of things where you have all these files and you're not quite sure what to do with them. Well, Tidy Up is a, another tool that uh, came out of Utah State University. And it is a tool that was developed in connection with our Disability Resource Center as a way of identifying what files and content is being used in your course. So if I go ahead and scan my course, this is actually looking through my assignments, discussions, pages, announcements, quizzes, et cetera, to identify uh, what files are being used where. Now, there is the limitation with this. Canvas doesn't give us the ability to look at your quiz question banks. Um, so you do need to be aware of that when you're working through them. But here I can see a list of all of these different files and I can hover over to get some information about it or to see a preview of it. Uh, I can see if it's being locked or unpublished or uh, I can see that this particular image is used on my homepage and it was last updated back in 2020 and this is its file size. Now, this last updated, um, just to clarify with this, this gets reset every time your course is copied. Um, so I can see if it's been changed in the current iteration of the course, but I can't track it back three years ago to that original version of the course uh, when it was first built. Um, so it is something that Canvas resets every time you copy a course. Um, so it's, it's not giving you that history back to the start of time. Um, we can do things like uh, changing the name, hiding or unhiding, publishing, unpublishing, uh, different people like that. And we can go through and I can see, uh, I can look at all of my files. I can look at uh, just those that are not being used, meaning that they just exist in the file section. They're not being linked to, they're not included in a module. They are just hanging out in the file section. And so I could go ahead and select these and I could go ahead and delete them. Now, I know that any of you out there who teach, you probably just, your heart just skipped a beat, and hopefully I didn't, you know, cause anyone to have a heart attack at the idea of deleting these files. Um, so you do also have the ability to, before you do that, you could download them. You could create a local copy. It'll create a zip folder with all those files in it, so you can reference back to them in the future. Or maybe I want to move them to a different folder, uh, and then I'll go through and teach the course this next term and make sure that I don't need any of those before I delete them. So there's lots of different things you can do with that. You can also look at your folder structure and delete folders that are no longer in use. Um, as it was looking through your Canvas content, it also gathered some basic information about that. Um, so uh, the, the types of content, their titles, if they're being used anywhere. So I can see that this particular discussion is being used in this module. Is it published? Is it used in the module section? Does it have content? When was it last updated? Uh, and so I can go ahead and remove items like this or see how they're interconnected. You can also see some uh, basic things like uh, activity. When did I, have I run scans? When was something, you know, updated? When was something deleted and by who? Um, you can see some of that information. You can see over time how it's changed. Now, since this is a demo course, I don't change a lot of things in here. So that's not quite as useful as it would be for a course that you're working through and making those adjustments. And so that's tidy up. It can help you with your content cleanup. The next thing we can talk about is accessibility. Now, the design tool sidebar has some stuff built into it to help make sure that as you're building content, just like the, the default tools in Canvas are provided to, to help you make sure that as you're building content, it meets those accessibility guidelines. Um, but if you need to review the course, or you want to just kind of get an idea and make sure that things haven't changed uh, to cause issues with that, um, you do it is a great tool for looking at your course as a whole. Uh, and looking into accessibility. So we can go ahead and open up You Do It. 
Um, now, you do it cloud is uh, out of uh, a cooperation and an agreement with University of Central Florida, uh, where they use this tool as a training tool to help their course content creators uh, understand some of the, the accessibility challenges that come into play and help recognize where maybe they uh, need some improvement in that area. Now, the first time you run it, it will scan your entire course looking for issues, so it can take a little bit. But the next time you come in, it's really just looking for changes. Uh, and to identify those. And you have this nice welcome screen uh, at the institution level. You can customize this for like intro videos or some basic information. You can also see what types of things you do at scans for. So it has errors. These are the things you really need to fix. Things like uh, empty headings or uh, missing or, you know, image alternative text that's the file name or uh, no table headers or these things that you really should address. And so you can get in these and learn more about those. There's also suggestions. These are the things that are a little less common and maybe not quite as cut and dry. So for example, one I like to show here uh, is this content should not exceed 3000 words. Now there's no hard fast rule out there that says that something with 3001 words is inaccessible and something with 3000 words is accessible. It's just something to help you gauge and understand when you might be getting a little carried away with your content. So I can go ahead and you know skip this in the future, or I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next point. This is kind of the jumping off point. If you've never really reviewed your course for accessibility before, it can be a little overwhelming. And so you do it provides you a couple of great starting points. So I could look at my most common errors or my most common suggestions, or maybe I wanna just look at what's gonna be the easiest for me to quickly fix. Or maybe I just wanna focus on errors, or maybe I want to look at just a specific type of error, or maybe I want to just start by focusing on my pages. These are all different things you can do to kind of get a, a good start on this. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up everything here. So now we can see the list of the errors that have been found and the suggestions, where they happen, what, you know, the, the content is, you know, what the issue is. And so we can start to review these. So uh, image alternative text sh shouldn't be the file name. I can see a preview of the image with what that current alternative text is. And I could actually use you do it right here to put in the new alternative text, hit save, and it's going to push that right into the content. I don't have to leave you do it to address these different issues uh, for the most part. Uh, or if it's just a decorative image, I can mark that. If I need a little more context, I can look at the HTML, uh, or I could click this to jump right to that assignment in Canvas so that I can look at it there. Uh, and then you can continue to work through your different issues. Um, Canvas is great at leaving little empty remnants of link. So I could either put some text in that or most instances I've ever encountered, it's usually pretty safe to just delete those empty links that hang in there. So I could go ahead and do that. Um, alt attributes, table headers, all of these different things are things that you can work through um, with um, YouTube videos, Kaltura videos and Vimeo videos. You do it can also check their uh, closed caption status. You know what types of, if they have captions, if they don't, uh, if they were auto generated. And now you do it won't let you fix captions. It doesn't have the ability to go into YouTube for you and fix captions on videos. Um, it, you can quickly scan it to look for updates. And if this is something that you've done all your due diligence. Um, and maybe this is something that you've worked with your disability resource center and you agree that you've created some other alternative to it. You can mark some of these things as reviewed as a way to say that these are addressed. We've done what we can with them. Um, and you can do that as you're going through. Uh, for example, like with that content length is 3000 words. This is in the syllabus for this course. Syllabi tend to have a lot of legalese. So maybe there's not much you can do about that. So I could mark it as resolved. Uh, and, or, and then, you know, know that I don't want to address that each time. If I want to come back and, you know, maybe everything up here says that everything was just manually resolved and I want to take a look at those, I could open up the filter and just look at those resolved issues. So just because you mark it as resolved doesn't mean it goes away. It's just helping you to kind of not have to work through it each time you've come through. Um, and so you can adjust those uh, different pieces there as well. You do it um, does uh, allow a little bit of help at present working with files. So you can see what files you have uh, and you can download those. You can see what types of things you would need to do to like say with this PDF file, what are the types of things with a PDF file you need to do to make it accessible. You do it does not currently have the ability to help you remediate that file uh, to make fixes for you automatically within it. That being said, uh, our City Labs development team is getting really close 
to having some of that additional functionality to either make a, an HTML version of the file that's a lot easier to correct some of those accessibility pieces or give you an optimized version of it that you can replace and use in your content. So um, we are working on that and it will be coming out in the future. You do it also has an admin component to it. Uh, that you can open at an account level that gives you an idea of what kind of issues have been seen. So if you're doing a training, you could look at like the top 10 errors that are being encountered. And you could focus on those inside your training. You can see what courses have used it and what kind of, you know, how many total issues have been found. You can rescan, you know, like I said, this reports is going to kind of gather in some of that data to let you see high level um, issues and, you know, how things have changed over time and what users have authorized the tool uh, and some different fun pieces there. So that's you do it. A great way to help with the accessibility portion of your journey. And then the last tool we're going to take a look at is to help you with course readiness. So this is a tool that uh, was developed at Utah State University to help us as we were run, leading into a new term. And we needed to come in and verify that all of our courses were set up and ready to go. Um, now, you do it does break up courses into deadlines that includes some sort of title and a date when those courses need to be ready. And it's going to pull in all of this information for these different courses. And so you can choose different terms and that might coincide with your default terms um, or it might be something that is um, you know, a one-off thing, like you might have some half or seven week courses that come out periodically. And so you can set those different pieces up. You do it, we'll check Canvas. It'll give you a link to the course. It's also going to scan through the course content, looking at kind of structural things, like is the course published? Does it have content in the syllabus section? Was that syllabus built with Design Plus? So, you know, in that case, it would be more likely to have those dynamic policies. Um, do they have a customized homepage? Do they have any users enrolled? Are they using assignments? Are they using modules? Are they using pages? Uh, do they have a grading scheme defined? Um, are they using discussions? So this lets you see kind of that overall structure. So I can start to scroll down through here. You can see this course, um, although it is published, doesn't look like it has any content in it. So maybe it's just waiting on that course content being imported from last term. Uh, and so you can get a feel there. These also act as links to as shortcuts to those areas of Canvas because it's not enough to necessarily know that this has course has a syllabus. You may need to jump in and make sure that the dates are up to date in there or that it has the appropriate policies it needs. So these will also take you to the course. In fact, this one right here will take you to the link validator uh, that you can, can and should run in Canvas. Canvas doesn't provide a way for us to automatically run that for you, but this does give you a shortcut so you can go in there. The next column here is a status. So these courses get brought in, they get assigned to team members who are responsible for reviewing them. And a part of that process, they can come in and say, okay, this course has got everything set. It's just waiting on being published. And you can set and define those statuses, what options are there, you know, the order they're in, all of that is stuff you can customize at the institution level. You can track notes on the course. Uh, maybe I messaged the instructor about the missing syllabus. Uh, and so I'm waiting on them making that update. This allows anyone uh, on the team or the team leader to come in and kind of scan through those to get an idea of what kind of notes and what kind of efforts have been made. Or maybe you're handing this course off to someone else to take over reviewing it. They can see kind of that, uh, what has happened so far. There's also a companion uh, tool that comes in with uh, ReadyGo. This gets added at, can be added at a course level. This allows you to, uh, the person reviewing the course, to chat back and forth between the instructor. Um, ReadyGo also has, um, oh, I lost it right there. Okay, it also has the ability to add checklists. So these can include lots of different things that you want to review or make sure that are ready, you know, that the, the, there's no broken links and that the organized, the course content is organized and navigation is easy to follow and, you know, the syllabus reflects the current semester. All these types of things, you can build institutional checklists. They can have additional information. You can add comments in these. You can see who marked it off when. And so you can track these and get an idea of how they're viewing here. And these can either be just internal to ready go 
or they can also be shared with the instructor. So maybe you're building checklists that the instructor is running through to verify that they have everything in place uh, for students at the start of term. You can also see other information like, you know, uh, course IDs and who is assigned to review this course and who's a teacher in this course and uh, when the teacher was last in the course and their total activity. So if I reached out to them earlier this week and said, uh, I need you to address these couple of things and I come refresh the data and they haven't been in there since then, I know I don't have to go try and review my list and make sure, uh, see what they've completed or not. You can see the total number of students. Now, none of our tools, we do not gather student identifiable information. When we query this course in Canvas, Canvas just provides us the total enrollment account. So we can send that and let you see that as well. Grading scheme information, start and end dates, the ability to update the course ID. If you've ever reset a course in Canvas, the ID changes. Uh, so you can adjust that so that your information stays in, up to date and you can remove it from ready go. So lots of things you can do here um, with these different alerts. Maybe I wanna come in and look at all of my unpublished courses and maybe it's time for the semester to start. And if you are the type of institution who makes this decision, I could go ahead and select all of these and I could go ahead and publish these courses right from within ReadyGo, or I could add to remove, you know, uh, checklists or the LTI tool, or, you know, I can remove them from ReadyGo. I can download the data as a CSV, lots of different things there. And then ReadyGo also has this reports panel where I can come in and get a high level overview of how our courses are doing how many are ready, how many are still pending, how many are just waiting on being published, how many courses don't have a grading scheme to defined or are you know missing the syllabus. And as a team leader or someone who's overseeing uh, teams or groups of team members, um, you can see that broken up there. Or if I were just an individual team member, I would just see this information for myself. So there's different ways you can drill down to that as well. Whew. Okay, so that was a very fast journey uh, through uh, some of our different tools. If you have, uh, like I said, if you want to look into any of these in deeper or set up a time uh, to answer questions, uh, we're willing to help with that. Uh, but with that being said, I'm gonna hand this back over to Jennifer. Thanks, Kenneth. And I'm going to invite you to start breathing again. <laughs> that was a great tour. Uh, definitely action-packed journey for, for the audience. Um, so without further ado, I before we get to questions, I want to um, announce the winner of our iPad um, selected at random from the participant panel. And I see still with us, um, Phoebe London. Congratulations, you have won an iPad. Um, please reach out to me, jennifer at citylabs.com to make arrangements for us to get it to you. Um, again, congratulations. This was the uh, first time we've done this on a webinar. So um, thank you everyone for, for hanging in there and uh, you know taking a chance. All right, so let's get to some of the questions. Um, where to start? So, um, Kenneth, uh, someone asked if you could demo key action items. Um, that's a really fun feature in Design Plus. And so I thought we might start with that. Okay, so this is also a good point to plug in that when we do uh, get you up and running in, in Design Plus, we do have training that you go through. Uh, this particular course is where I'm gonna just go ahead and pull up uh, our key action items. Uh, if I can find it off the top of Okay, I'm feeling blind. Oh, I went to the wrong course, that's why. This is an old one. Let me go to the new one. I was thinking that doesn't look right. That looks funny. Action items. When you're editing content, um, whether or not you open the design tool sidebar, because this is actually something that we can install as hidden. So only users who know a you know, secret keyboard shortcut can get into it. But anyone who edits can open up the key action items. So in this particular page, you'll see we have some inline prompts, you know, that, that might be like, you know, put your name here, or you can put in blocks of instructions that include, you know, images, videos, you know, et cetera. And so someone who is completing those can come in and they can see, okay, I have six steps remaining with something that's an inline. Maybe this is put your name here. I could type in my name and I could go ahead and insert it. And then I could mark it as complete, which removes it. And it's just kind of a quick and easy way to work through. Um, 
um, with the blocks of content, usually I assume this is like lots of steps. And so you can go ahead and mark those as complete. To actually create them, you would actually come in and as a user, if you've not turned on some of the more advanced tools, you can turn those on. Um, or when a tool has been used, Oh, key action items isn't one of those. I, I kind of thought that was the case. I can choose a comfort level. This is where you get all of these other fun pieces. Um, but I can come into the key action items tool and I could either, you know, insert a new block of information or if I have an existing block, I can come in here and I could mark that as some instructions. And so it's really just a different way to do that. But if I change over to that browser view, those pieces miss. They're not there. Um, I've seen lots of times with courses where that kind of uh, placeholder text, someone forgets to remove it, um, or you've done things like marking it red and someone fills in the information, but it stays red. This is to kind of help with those. We do also uh, have in progress the next generation of the tools in which I've added a bunch of additional. So here we have like a, a basic placeholder for some text uh, and then like instruction blocks. Uh, but in the next generation, you can make recommendations. You can make a suggestion or I think you should add this information and the person can choose to accept it or reject it or you can say I think you should delete this and until they accept it or direct or, or reject it uh, see that information or you can make lists like this that are actually checklists so the person going through can check off those items and see that uh, as they're completing their way or marking as complete doesn't just remove it it gives them a little checkbox at the top that says it's complete so that someone who is reviewing that can say oh yep that's complete now I'm ready to remove it um, so there are some fun improvements coming to this particular tool in the future with the next generation of the design tool sidebar but this is as far as it's going to go with the current one Thank you, Kenneth. Um, all right, while we're in Design Plus, can you talk just quickly about um, for progress bars, what are the elements in the course that can be kind of pulled into the progress bar feature? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really just how your module is stru structured. So it's based on that. So if I were to come into, uh, let's say, where's my progress bar page? We'll just keep using this since this is where we are. Um, there we go. Um, so it's really just looking at, okay, how many items in there? So it does ignore headings uh, for like this. So this is item 14 of 17 inside this module. That wouldn't include like just the text heading. It's including your pages, assignments, discussions, quizzes, et cetera, that are in there. This one gives that same visual idea of how far the student is through the course, but it's created these linked icons <laughs> to represent that. This one is really just the same type of view that you see when you go to the modules page. And that includes point values, due dates, prerequisites, uh, if it's locked, if it's late, all of that kind of information that you'd see on the modules page in Canvas in the same type of structure and layout. You can add this progress bar to a page so students can utilize that information right there. And then this one here uses those same types of content. Uh, but as I mentioned, this is based on the completion requirements you set. So if there is a requirement that they have to submit it, they have to score so many points, et cetera, they'd see a little circle next to it. If they've met that requirement, it gets marked off for them. Once they've completed the full module, it gets marked off. So it's really just utilizing what you're building inside your modules in Canvas uh, to build that out. And these are dynamic. When you're actually editing a page, you're really just putting in a placeholder for those where you want that progress bar to be built. And so then when it's uh, someone comes to the page, it builds that out so that you don't have to worry about editing all your pages when you add a new item to a module or you don't have to go in and change dates or times or things like that. The one drawback of that dynamic functionality is that this is one piece, one of very few pieces that does not work in Canvas's mobile apps. Canvas doesn't provide us the way to look up this information from the mobile app. And so these would just disappear in the mobile app, um, but they do work really well in the browser. That's a really good transition to the last question I was going to ask you from the audience related to Design Plus, and then I'll answer a couple about Tidy Up and You Do It. But um, the question was, how well does the content transition between devices such as cell phone or other devices or the Canvas app? Yeah, great question. So as I mentioned, it's all built to be responsive. So depending on your browser size, if you're on a mobile app, uh, it all works just fine. If you're using the mobile browser, your progress bars, all of that will work. Um, but just like I said, there are a few differences with the mobile app. Primarily it's tied to things like uh, where we're dynamically building this module information that we can't do from Canvas's mobile app. 
Um, and then there are one of the, the modal dialogue uh, uses a different format in the app because the, the default dialogue didn't work very well in their app. And so, you know, there are a few uh, tweaks in the mobile app, but all of the content is there, all of it's visible, it's navigable. I mean, even to the point that if you make it available offline and it's plain text, most of this still will just flow and function nicely, even in that environment. Okay, thank you. Right, so <clears throat> those are the Design Plus related questions that I can see. Um, another question that someone asked, so I know it's um, kind of hard to keep straight, you know, wh where one tool ends and the other begins, but someone asked, um, do, do the tidy up and you do it tools come with Design Plus or are they add-ons? So they are separate tools. So we have four separate tools. You license them separately. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about the pricing for those or taking a deeper dive and in, in, um, scheduling a one-on-one -on -one demo for any of those tools, please do reach out to us at citylabs.com. Um, our team is super fast to respond. And so we'll get you the information you need. Um, another question that came in about you do it is the accessibility checking tool is whether you can check at a higher level than the class. So for example, across classes. And so I don't think Kenneth showed it, but we, you do it, cloud does come with an admin tool and that allows the admin level user of you do it cloud to um, scan courses um, across the, um, the account. And however, you, you do have to scan them one at a time. Um, the ability to kind of just press scan once across an entire sub account or something like that is something we would love to add in the future. But currently in the you do it cloud admin tool, you, you click scan, um, you can see all the courses and, and you can scan them as Kenneth is showing. Um, okay, so let's see, what else do we have here? Um, one other question I saw just went away, but um, is that um, someone mentioned that we recently announced new tutorial videos for um, Design Plus, and I'm, I'm glad someone mentioned that, where we are really happy to, um, to announce the availability of those. And they are somewhat focused on, you know, introductory type information to the features of Design Plus. We, the question was, do we have videos on more advanced features? And so what I would say about that is that we provide um, really an outstanding and very um, robust training offering with Design Plus, and that includes intermediate and advanced training. Um, really going through all of the features in depth. Those um, trainings are, are live, however, virtual, but live, synchronous. And um, we do, however, provide the recording to those trainings. So if you haven't yet attended that or you want a recording, just reach out to us and um, we'd be happy to get you. Um, with that said, I think um, developing smaller you know, um, videos like in the form of the tutorial for all of the features is something we'd love to to expand in the future as well. Yeah, and a lot of that um, is also with the next generation of Design Plus, we have a lot more built in ways to have tutorials and interactive pieces so you can learn more about the tools right from within the tools themselves rather than having to go out. So that's another thing that as we uh, get closer to that release, we'll be developing a lot of different uh, resources to help teach about different pieces along the way. Great. All right, well, we have one more question that hasn't been answered. Um, Kenneth, someone asked um, that um, aside from the quick check option, do we have any other review type activities available? And um, yeah, you that's, know, like that's a great cards? question. We, we don't. Uh, when I initially built that tool, it was when Canvas was uh, putting their big push for their new quizzes. And one of their plans initially was to make it so you could embed individual quiz questions into the content. 
Um, and so we didn't go too far down that road. Uh, that hasn't ended up coming out. I don't even know if that's even still a plan anywhere in there. I haven't heard anything about that recently. But um, you can also utilize with like that iframe tool. If you use like H5P, those are some great, there's a lot of great resources out there uh, that provide other things like flashcards and interactive maps and stuff that you can um, take from their sites and embed uh, into your Canvas course. We've done that a lot at Utah State and I've worked with a lot of people who've done that. Um, and those work nicely inside that. Um, we do have some tentative plans in the future after we get the next generation out the door of starting to try and incorporate a few additional pieces. Um, but we're going to have to wait and see how that comes together after we get uh, things up and running and, and moving with the next generation. All right. Well, we are at the top of the hour. So with that, I'll thank everyone again for attending. As always, if you want more information, please do visit us at citylabs.com. We'd love to talk to you more. And again, thank you, Kenneth, for taking us on that whirlwind tour and journey. And um, we wish you all well. Yeah, thanks. thanks for coming. Have a wonderful day.